we're gonna start out today's episode or stream should i say i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna do this uh episodically shall we say but we're gonna start out with uh ben shapiro debating andrew neal uh ben shapiro you follow now andrew neal is a british conservative you know uh political host and Ben Shapiro got on. This is when he lived in Los An- Los Angeles too. So he used to live in, in uh, L.A. and now he shits on on California all the time. You know, says that it's like lib libtard city and like full of illiberals and blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, he's literally he's a theater kid, man. He's a theater kid. This dude studied the arts of like violin or whatever his dad did, and like you know he took he took uh, acting lessons and shit. That's why he does the whole uh, uh, Daily Wire movies. The Daily Wire movies you can see. That's why he does it. He's a theater kid. By millions of people online and on social media, you're one of the biggest names in American conservatism. Oh, it's so lame that this dude's the biggest name in conservative fucking political, uh, uh, you know, what, what do you say? Conservative, whatever the fuck. It's just sad that this dude's famous in conservative circles. Like, this dude is a dweeb. You would push this dude into lockers. I would be bullied with this guy. I would be in the same group. We would both get bullied in school. I was in the the group with the nerds that played video games. And this dude was the the group and the nerds. You know, that just fucking follow what their parents wanted them to do. And in fact, this dude went to like a privileged school probably. So like, you probably didn't even get bullied enough. If even bullied. What is it you think you're tapping into? Well, I think that there, there are a couple of things. One, there is actually a hunger for different ideas. Not that ideas. I'll do bullying, the, by the way. The monolithic bullying, nature like of the I've United States media and sometimes is pretty bullying sets evident straight, in terms you know of its I mean? politics. People tend to agree on essentially the liberal point of view and increasingly a, a radical leftist point of view in the media. And obviously... What radical leftist point of view? There is no radical leftist point of view. The closest you'd get to radical leftist point of view in mainstream media is TYT, the Young Turks. And they're not even on mainstream media. They're online. So where the hell is this radical leftism? Radical leftism. Ah, it's everywhere. Where is that? I don't see it. Like CNN, that's centrist. And and it leans way farther right because they're capitalist. You know, they're more capitalist than TYT. MSNBC, they're another one. They're literally a centrist. Maybe better than than uh, CNN. I'm not sure, but they're also trash. And then, you know, you got fucking uh, CBC, BBC. You know what I mean? Like all these fucking C's and shit. They're all they're all they're all mainstream centrist trash. All right. That's why you see more leftism, you know, in YouTube or in like really small platforms because there just there isn't no mainstream leftist channel. It's just not. They're they're corporate centrist. They're farther right than you think. Okay. Obviously, I speak to in response to that. At the same time, uh, I try to provide an honest take on the issues of the day, and that means that I am not beholden to the Republican Party. That is bullshit. He's trying to take an honest take for today, and he's not beholden to the Republican Party, bro. His entire organization, Daily Wire, was funded by oil billionaires and other wealthy people, okay? He is he is beholden to them. That is who he is beholden to. For example, uh, it means that I am going That's to trash. speak out whenever I think that a principle is being violated. Just He never speaks out. The only time he's spoken out was, was with Kanye, okay? And I agree with him, okay? He should speak out about Kanye, and he should also speak out about Candace Owens, Matt Walsh, you know, a bunch of these other fucking demons, gremlins, little little orcs, little uh, uh, gnomes that that work at the Daily Wire. No matter who is doing the violation. You work for the right-wing Breitbart website, uh, but you left over its support for Donald Trump. And I think you said you'd never vote for Mr. Trump. Why is that? Well, in 2015, uh, 2016, the Breitbart made... That's true. A lot of right-wingers didn't want to support Trump at first. A lot of them didn't want to support Trump. They were shitting on Trump from the beginning. And it was, it was only until Trump won that they all started sucking his wee-wee. 
They were all lining up right behind him for the Bukaki, bro. They were all there. All of them, once he won. Because that's what the Republican Party does. They get behind the leader right away. It doesn't matter. They're like soldiers. They're literally like soldiers and they follow the commander. Commander-in-chief, they'll literally, like, whoever it is, even if they were shitting, shitting on them at first, whoever it is, they will like him. And that's one thing that the left has trouble with. Like, the left has a, a big problem with not getting together and, you know, like, coercing and just working together and, and you know, destroying the right. Like, we, we really do struggle with that. And it's because the, the left has so many free ideas and so many different ideologies and so many different ideas battling each other in a marketplace of ideas. So, the as the right wing says. Um, but the right wing, they don't have a lot of ideas. It's conservative. It's it's old school shit. Like, it, we all know what it is. You know, it's religious. It's fucking dude and female, you know, like, uh, just a lot of weird shit. We'll get more into that. Made a, a hard turn in favor of one particular candidate, and that's their prerogative. Lots of publications have an editorial point of view, and Breitbart was one of those. The reason that I left Breitbart specifically was because was because of an incident in which a Breitbart reporter, a female reporter, was grabbed on the arm by Corey Lewandowski, then the campaign manager for President Trump. Oh my uh, God. And I'm pretty sure Breitbart has some other stuff that I don't know Corey about. Lewandowski but proceeded I've, I've to heard lie about it, and, and Breitbart proceeded to throw its own reporter under the bus, suggest that she was lying case. or making this up. And at that point, I determined that I could no longer work for a publication that wasn't even willing to stand up for its own. That's, I'm pretty sure that's bullshit. I'm pretty sure if I knew a little more about the whole Breitbart situation, I would look it up. Let me see. Let me see if I can look it up. Um, let's see what this is. Uh, ben Shapiro on, uh, oh shit. Oh, how the group will take advantage of the new... Yeah, Steve Bannon is an anti-Semite. I know that for sure. I don't know if Slay's even good, man. I don't see any good one. Get the get out of here, man. Except oh, whatever. Yeah, when they say Western values, see over here the controversial commentator talks to the econom ec economist about Western values. Western values just means male and female gender religious christian religious so get or get rid of every other religion islamic uh, buddhism every other religion just christian and um you know just fucking stupid roman shit too the italian roman is like rome and like all those other stupid germanic tribes and saxons and it's fucking racist shit that's all it is and he gets right he gets in right with that I don't know. Let's keep watching. On reporters, and instead would throw those reporters under the bus in favor of a candidate that it sought to back. Haven't you lost your battle for the Republican Party, though? Isn't the Republican Party now the party of Trump? No, I mean, I think that the Republican... Yes, it is. The Republican Party is literally the, the party of Trump. Maybe not nowadays. Maybe not today. Because Trump has been fucking up with their base so much. Uh, not even with the base. Trump has been fucking up with, with the politicians in their party. A lot of them are moving towards DeSantis now. They want DeSantis instead of Trump. But Trump is still the head honcho. A lot of the followers still love Trump. And so he's just lying. There's been like four lies already. He's just been lying. The Republican Party is always the party of whomever is the president, technically speaking. But in terms of who are the sort of the thought leaders inside the conservative movement, who are the people who are driving a lot of the discussion inside the conservative movement. I don't think that's correct at all. I think that most Republicans see President Trump as a vehicle for their policy preferences, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they agree with all of his personal foibles or the way that he behaves or the things uh, that he says. And I think a lot of Republicans respond in anger to the media attacking President Trump mainly out of a, a reactionary and half appropriate Republicans love what Trump does. They love the racism, the xenophobia, the homophobia. They love it all. They don't care. They're lying. They don't care if you're telling the truth. They want it. Upset that the media seem to have a double standard they when it comes it. to covering certain politicians. I'm interested that you think there's a thought movement inside the Republican Party. I mean, haven't the conservatives... Uh run out of IDs in America, all the new policies, the Medicare for all, $15 yep. minimum wage, the yep. Green New Deal. 
They're all coming from the left. Yeah, they're all coming from the left. The left cares more about people than the right. The left cares more about the citizens of the country than the right. The right is in it's only there for a small group of people. That is that is who the right are run by. The right are run by mostly Christian white males. They want to bring that back. They want to bring that majoritarianism, but the majority of Christian, they want a Christian country. It's it's crazy. They don't care. They don't want you to have uh, health care. They don't want you to have insurance. They don't want you to have fucking food food in your you know like cheap food, cheap good good paying jobs, anything. They just don't want it. Any social program they don't want because they want to save money. They're capitalist. Capitalism. It goes against a lot of leftist roots. You know, the more left you go, the more you go towards communism. Communism is literally getting rid of money. Everyone lives in like a post-scarcity society. That means that there's no longer scarcity. Like we have enough food. We have enough everything. We have enough food right now. We just waste a lot of it. We waste a lot of it. And I will, I'll watch more videos about that too. And they're popular. Well, Frank, fr I mean, frankly, I'm confused by the idea that any of those are, are particularly new ideas. I mean, most of those ideas have been around since Franklin Delano Roosevelt at the very earliest. Yeah, these ideas have been around for a very long time. Literally, like, there were, there were like, ancient kingdoms in, like, the Middle East and Africa that fucking gave all their, uh, all their citizens health care and shit. You know what I mean? Like, we're literally strolling back in time, and these people are the reason why. These people are the reason why we're not progressing, we're regressing. We're going backwards. Or at the very latest, rather, Fucking something religion, going man. back to Woodrow Wilson. I'm not religious. But the idea that not new ideas all, are absent in the Republican Party is obviously untrue. We have a, a very strong debate that goes on inside sort of the, the conservative halls of intelligentsia uh, about what is the appropriate action to take with regard to the medical system. Should global warming be... Con That's not true. That's not true. They don't care about global warming. They don't care about evidence, intelligentsia. They don't care about none of that shit. All they care about is saving profits. If you are regulated, if the government regulates your company to install more filters so that the smoke and the carbon dioxide doesn't all go into the air, they're not going to want that because they don't want to spend the money to do that. You guys understand? We as the workers, we're like, yeah, why doesn't our company do that? But the company, when they think about it, they're like, why would we do that? That's like spending way more money than we want to. That's like, that's cutting into our budget. That's cutting into our revenue. Considered. Uh, a real threat, or should global warming be be considered something that technology will solve? And if so, what are the best best aspects of, of solving that? Now, there's a, there's a rich intellectual debate on the right about nationalism versus patriotism, for example, or nationalism versus patriotism. I really think they they those two topics get very close to each other. I feel like at a certain point, you go from patriot to nationalist, and vice versa. Like. You can get lost in patriotism and love your country so much that, like, you want, like, a fucking white ethno state. So. Populism versus free marketeerism. Populism. Populism is when the majority of the country wants a certain thing. Like, for example, the majority of the country wants legal marijuana. The majority of the country wants Medicare for all. The majority of the country wants child care. The majority of the country wants fucking, uh, you know, a lower, l lower the military budget. It's like we're wasting mad money blowing brown people up. You know what I mean? Like the major that's populism. If you were a populist, you would do what the majority of the country wants. But none of the presidents that we have are populist. They're not, and including Trump, they're they're not populist. And a lot of right wingers are definitely not populist. They're major they're major they're mi minor minorityists. All right, they like the they want the, what the minority of the people want, and they want to put that on the majority of the people. That debate is happening on the right to, to sort of if that's even a real that word. The right in America is bereft of ideas, but the left is full of ideas. Number one, not all ideas are good ideas. I mean, AOC is pretty good evidence of that. I'm I'm a big fan of some old ideas. Yeah, not all good idea. Not all ideas are good ideas. It's, that goes with your fucking your the right. Not all your ideas are good ideas, and most of your ideas are trash ideas, and most of them are bad. And most of the left ideas are good ideas, and not a lot of them are bad. So why would you go right wing? It's you either you're the right wing is literally the way to go if you want to be a fucking Sith. If you want to be a bad dude, if you want to be evil and like hit, like fucking authoritarian and terrible, you literally go the right wing. You literally go the right wing, and that's terrible because I have so many family members that like believe this shit, man, and it's so sad. It's so ideas sad. myself that I think are are pretty good, but beyond that, I think that it is it is intellectual. Uh, intellectual sneering of the highest order to suggest that only the left has has new and decent ideas. Let me uh, let me speed this up a bit. 
it back speed because Ben Shapiro, I, I guess he doesn't talk fast anymore. I mean, right nowadays he talks super fast, but maybe this is back in the day when he talked a little slow. He was a normal speed at this time. Some of the ideas that are popular in your side of politics uh, would seem to take us back to the Dark Ages. George yep. A lot of the ideas that conservatives want will take us back to the Dark Ages. They want a fucking Christian ethnostate. They just want... They literally... Like, look at the Taliban. Look at the ta how the Taliban took over Afghanistan, right? Look how they're treating women right now. They don't let women walk without husbands. They don't let women learn. They don't let women drive cars. They don't let women go have fun by themselves. They don't let women not wear a fucking turban on their head or whatever. A, a burqa. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know. You know, the... the cultural clothing or whatever anyways they're doing that here too they're stripping women of their right to choose they're stripping women of their abort you know the abortion rights the right to choose they're they're fucking they're they're taking lgbt people's rights away gay people's rights away black people's rights away they're like stripping education schools from like educational sources like uh they're getting rid of mlk and shit in, in texas and a bunch of civil rights stuff it's like why are you doing that why are you doing that you definitely don't like uh, educating people. I know that. Georgia, new abortion laws, uh, which yep. you are much in favor of, uh, that uh, a woman who miscarries could get 30 years. A woman who miscarries can get 30 fucking years. Why? Why? Why is that the case? Have you guys seen a fucking zygote? This is This is the baby they're talking about. This is the baby, y'all. You guys like babies? This is the beautiful. Look at that beautiful baby. Oh man, that's amazing. Look at that life. A zygote is a fertilized eukaryote cell that formed after the union of male and female gametes. This thing is a fucking... It's literally a, a, a slob. It's like a fucking... Uh, it's like a fucking... What, what, what do you call it? Like It's like shit in the back of your throat. You know what I mean? This is boogers, bro. That's what it is. This is what the life they want to protect right here. This. They want to protect this. This fucking dinosaur, dude. This is what they want to protect. This is the baby. This is the baby to them. This is the baby to them. This is the baby to them. This is the baby. This is definitely a baby. This is multiple babies, actually. This is a whole fucking basket of babies to them. And this is a little dinosaur baby to them. This is a little baby. Oh, look at the fucking eyeball, bro. It's like a little... It's a pimple. And that's a baby. Okay. Oh, look. That's a little more humanoid. But... Like... From here back... Flush that shit. And honestly, I leave it up to the mother. I don't care. Let her choose. Let her choose when to when to have the kid. Most abortions happen in the first around these stages right here. Most abortions happen around these fucking stages when it's a a fucking a piece of goop. It's goop. It's goop. It's if it's Gwyneth Paltrow's goop. <laughs> okay, that's what it is. It's fucking nasty. Flush it, dude. Flush that thing. <laughs> a Georgian woman who travels Flush to another it. state for an abortion procedure could get 10 years. These are extreme hard policies. Well, okay, a couple of things. One, 10 I'm not years sure. I mean, frankly, I don't for know what flushing it. Are you an objective journalist or are you an opinion journalist? I'm a Just journalist that asks. This is when Ben Shapiro gets mad. <laughs> this is literally when, when, when Ben Shapiro starts like, his little brain starts to boil. All right? And this is when uh this is when Ben Shapiro could use like the the beanie that Tim Pool has, all right? To just to just hold his brain in there, you know, cuz it's it's like boiling and it's about to pop and burst out. 
So he's getting really mad at uh, Andrew Neal, who's also a conservative. Okay? This dude's a conservative. But these conservatives here are not as crazy as these conservatives. That's the problem. Questions. Okay, so you're, in a, you're a supposedly objective journalist calling policies with which you disagree barbaric and no, suggesting I, only one side of the political... You're, you're an objective journalist who is uh, questioning every uh, policy as a, a, a barbaric. Huh? Why, why, why are you saying that? So now he's getting mad and he's saying that, oh, this guy is saying that oh, all the policies are barbaric, which a lot of them are. He's telling the truth, Ben Shapiro. Facts over your feelings. Aisle no. has ideas, so I just want to point out that no, I, know that I wish you would, I wish I, at least be honest in your own biases. Mr. Shapiro, so are, are I know that you, broadcasting in America is not so polarized that on one program you only have the left and another one you just have the right. My job well, is to question those who have strong views and put in a... Yeah, see, his job, he, he said himself, his job is not to just go along with the right wing's point of view. His job is to question whether you're left or the right, your ideas, and his ideas... Ben Shapiro's ideas are trash. They're trash. They're utter trash. Okay? Alternative to them. If you were an anti-abortion anti well anti person, I would be putting pro-abortion questions to you. But you are really, an anti-abortion person. Would you call the pro-choice position? So, so, so why don't so you just answer my question? Sir, huh. sir, I'm happy to answer your question. Please answer this then. one. Would you suggest... Sir? Sir, please? Please calm down, sir. Sir? Sir, I know, you're freak I know I'm freaking out, but sir, please calm down. I will leave your studio soon. Stop it. Would you suggest that a late-term abortion is brutal? I'm not taking a view on this issue. I'm asking you a question. No. No one has an abortion when the baby's being born, you dickhead. What the fuck is a late... What? what? Let them suck that shit out whenever. Okay? Sometimes the baby has an issue. Sometimes the baby's being born with a fucking brain tumor. Or like two jaws, or two arms, or like two hearts, or like half a brain missing, or half a head missing. That's literally happened recently. I'm going to look it up. Because that's literally happened recently. A baby was born with half a fucking skull. Come on, man. Come on. Why is my... Keyboard not working. I'm sorry, boys. Technical issues. Technical issues. Oh no, where is it? Where is it? Uh Look at this. Actually, I found a better one. I found a better one. Louisiana, boy! Louisiana! Yeow! <laughs> Louisiana woman denied abortion despite unborn baby's fatal skull condition. The baby's gonna be born dead! It's gonna die as soon as it's born! And that could kill the mother! On June 24th this year, Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Yeah, we know that. Blah, 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 blah. Since Louisiana has become one of the most difficult places in the country... To obtain an abortion since uh, a pregnancy endangers the life of a mother. Yeah, it endangers the life of a mother. It endangers the life of a mother. This is why we can't draw the lines and when you shouldn't be able to abort. If it's a baby, you're not gonna be able to like no. Okay, if it's a baby, don't ha don't abort the baby. It's alive. If it if it's out of the VJ, it's alive and you'll go to jail for killing it. All right. And if it's like a few months about to be born, like a month before being born or whatever. There's lines you can draw, but leave it up to the mother at least, because this is bullshit. A baby with no skull. Dude, imagine you having a fucking headless baby. A headless Sir, baby, you just bro. suggested the pro-life position is inherently brutal and terrible, so what I'm asking you that? as an objective journalist, would you ask the same question to a pro-choice advocate by what, calling what your I'm, position brutal what and What I'm adorable? asking you is that why is it that a bill banning abortions after a woman has been pregnant for six weeks 
is not a return to the Dark Ages. What's your yeah. answer? My answer is something called That's science. the return of the Dark Ages, bro. It is. It ought to be protected. Now, back That's the return of the Dark Ages. Straight up, Andrew Neo is correct, and he is a king. I That's forgot my to add him in the, the thumbnail. You purport to be an objective journalist. BBC purports to be an objective down-the-middle network. It obviously is not. It never has been. And you, as a journalist, are proceeding to call one side of the political aisle ignorant, barbaric, and sending us back to the Dark Ages. Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Uh, is this all he is not on the left! He is not on... This, this old grandpa? This dude? This reminds me of my grandpa. My grandpa ain't on the left. I mean, he's like centrist at best. But he ain't on leftist. He calls me a fucking commie. He thinks Bernie's gonna like fucking burn the world. Burn the world down. You know what I mean? Take over. Restart the, the USSAR. No. This dude's a conservative. He's just not a psychopath like you, Ben Shapiro, or the American right. So hard for you. Why can't you just be honest? <laughs> Mr. Shapiro, Seriously, I, it's a serious question. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. So let's move on. Um, would you vote for Mr. Trump in 2020? Yes. I'd certainly consider voting for Mr. Trump in 2020, just like yes. I'd consider voting for anybody else in 2020. He doesn't uh, care. You'd, you'd never vote for him. Ah, he did say that. He did say that. I bet, but this is what I'm saying. They don't give a shit. They don't care who it is. They will line up behind the leader, no matter what. Us on the left, we I criticize Biden. I shit on him. I shit on all the Democrats. Maybe not Bernie. I shit on Bernie every once in a while, actually, because, you know, he doesn't always do what he has to. And that's not bad. But the right, they don't shit on someone. They will follow them. They will suck every little drop that comes out of the wee-woo. The wah wee 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 wah and then I wrote a column for National Review explaining the conditions under which I might change my mind. You're a, a, a culture war warrior, isn't the wah -wah -wee -wah. he largely on your side? You, you wrote once it was unlikely he'd appoint conservative judges to the Supreme Court. He has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, Ben Shapiro wrote, Donald Trump won't appoint conservative judges to the Supreme Court that will then revoke Roe v. Wade and make all the women's rights worse and uh, destroy the country. No, he will not do that. But uh but uh but um he fucking did it. He did it, and they revoked Roe v. Wade, and it could get way worse. Right. That so you were wrong. Because that was literally I, I like a right. That was a human Trump's right, policies, man. Even if I still have... They could get rid of... Uh, they could literally get rid of um, uh, um, marriages between uh, different uh, colored people. Like, you know, like... It's fucking Serious bullshit. reservations about his personality and character. Do you think there's a Democrat that could beat him in 2020? Sure, I think there are several Democrats who could beat him in 2020. Who would have the best chance? I think that Joe Biden is likeliest to beat him, considering that he has significant appeal. Oh, yeah. Joe Brandon slammed the shit out of Trump, bro. Slammed the shit out of Trump. And the only reason why I'm worried about Joe Brandon running again is because uh, Ron DeSantis might run. And if Ron DeSantis beats Trump, then that's a big problem. But I think Trump might beat Ron DeSantis, and therefore Biden will be all right. Uh, but I, I would like a Bernie run, you know? In a lot of the Rust Belt, in places like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, the places that President Trump needs to win to retain the presidency. And Joe Biden also has a long history in politics, which means that the American people already have sort of a preconceived vision of him. President Trump as a campaigner is very good at dragging unknowns through the mud uh, or at exposing details about people that are pre That's true. Trump is very good at dragging people through the mud. Like he will, he, I don't know if he does it anymore, but like back in the day when he ran, you know, he was, he was dissing people like. He was ruth. He was ruthless, man. He was dissing the shit out of people, and that's why a lot of people like him because he's very entertaining. He's funny accidentally, and he uh, he's ruthless. He drags us. He, he he will drax you. He will like he will slam you. Previously, sort of with, covered up. But when like it comes to Joe Biden, he's jokes. been well exposed for a very long time. Most people know him, and he's not nearly as unpopular even going in as Hillary Clinton was in 2016. So, if it was a close race between Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump, you would, from what you say, I think. Probably go for Mr. Trump. Yes, I would vote for Mr. Trump if there were a race between Biden and Trump because I think that the damage that President Trump has done to the country on a character and rhetorical level has already been done and cannot be undone. I don't see it as getting worse. Hey, what do you say? Or a race between Biden and Trump because I think that the damage that President Trump has done to the country on a character and rhetorical level has already been done and cannot be undone. I don't see it as getting worse day by day. That is the So he said he's going to vote for Trump because the damage that Trump did is not going to go away anyways. So he's like, yeah, I'll vote for Trump. Eh, we're not gonna go back in time anyways. What am I gonna do? I gotta fall in line. New status quo, eh, I unfortunately. You people. Now the question becomes which policies I would most like to see enacted, and Trump's policy preferences are closer to my own than Joe Biden's are. Now, you're a star of new media, of conservative new media. Uh, you and others 
Bro, the Torah, the Jewish biblical book, literally allows abortion. It says you are not a life until first breath. You are not a life until first breath. You are not alive until first fucking breath. So where is Ben Shapiro coming out of nowhere trying to tell people that he agrees with he, that he agrees with the Christian uh, right? They're against what what you believe, Ben. Literally, on the you're left Jewish. And the right, you position yourselves as supposed tellers of hard truths, but haven't you all just really coarsened public discourse in America and exacerbated its divisions? Yes. You know, it's kind of odd to be to be hearing about me coarsening public discourse. They have exacerbated every division possible. They're trying to they're trying to drive a wedge in between the 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 trans community and the LGBT community. I mean, the LGB community. They're trying to tr like literally drive us apart, all right? They're literally doing that. They got uh, um libs of TikTok out there spreading false information and bullshit. And like harassing teachers and trans people, it's it's so sad. It's so sad. Of course, when you call policies you disagree with brutal and bring us back to the dark ages, sir. Uh, the point I don't want to return to, but the point was to put a position for you to reply to it, and I thought we covered yeah, that. that. That's, uh, well, I, I'll I put think some that of the points too, because on your your, your videos, characterization of issues is part of the problem in the well, coarsening of public. Your characterization of issues is part of the problem. All right, I disagree with you. Well, okay. maybe it's also part of your problem too, because oh, it is part of your problem, Ben. That was a fire-ass rebuttal. We have from your YouTube videos, Ben Shapiro destroys the abortion argument. Ben Shapiro destroys trans transgenderism and... Ben Shapiro destroys transgenderism! Soy! Abortion. Is that not a kind of coarse public discourse? Well, are those videos labeled by me? I have no idea. Why are you picking out... Why are, why are you they probably out? are. They're either labeled by you, Ben, or they're labeled by someone you hired, Ben. Or labeled by uh, an organization that likes you, Ben. Or labeled by a friend of yours, Ben. Someone on the right wing, Ben. That's who they're labeled by. It doesn't matter if you didn't fucking label it. They're labeled by a friend of yours, probably. I have a question. Why are you picking out random YouTube videos put up by people who are not me? Are you attributing uh, the titles to me? Are you unhappy with the way they've been described? Ah, he is. Uh, I think that people can describe me however they please. It's a free country. And He's getting triggered. He's getting triggered. And I'm all in favor of a, public, of a public debate. If you watch the actual clips, they are generally civil conversations. Bro, this is why I'm saying he needs a beanie. He needs a beanie to cover the little uh, mezuzah or whatever that thing is. Conversations between me and somebody who disagrees with me. Mezuzah? You say in your uh, new book, uh, you suggest that America's largest struggle at the moment is, quote, the struggle for our national soul. We are so angry at each other right now. And I, I think that's true. I've just returned from the United Our States. national soul. But aren't you part of the problem with the way you go about your discourse? Yes. Yes. This is a conservative literally asking Ben Shapiro, aren't you the problem? There's all this hate going around and, uh, you know, you, you guys talk about all this hate going around and, like, aren't you the problem? Haven't you all been spreading some hate recently, man? What's going on, man? not the solution. I think we can all do better in our discourse, but the fact that I've reached out to so many people across the aisle to have conversations with them is pretty... I've reached out across the aisle. I've reached out across the aisle. So many people I've reached out. Bro, go on TYT, bro. Go on TYT. Go on the Majority Report. Go on Go on the H3 Podcast just for fun. Look, it's a fellow Jew. Go on the H3 Podcast, Ben. Do it. Evidence. The fact that I was willing to walk from a publication that was paying me money over principle is pretty evident. The fact that I've called out President Trump, a member of a party of which I am a member, Repeatedly, when I think that you called him out and then you sucked his wee wee right after his wee wah woo wee wah 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 wee wah. Let me look up. Uh, uh, this is what I mean, guys. Uh, this is what I mean by this. Uh, wah wah wee wah Borat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, la, la. Whoa, whoa, whoa. King of the castle. King of the castle. King of the castle. King of the castle. The left is the king of the castles. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He has done things that are immoral, I think is decent evidence. I'm looking at least for a oh, civil boy, conversation. Right. Well, you, as you say in your book, you say this, this is quite project, a key phrase. We are so angry at each other. Oh, what happened? What happened? What it's, happened? It's something that you and I have talked about because I can't we are hear friends. anything. We have dined together. 
We've hung out. I can't hear no tang. No <laughs> tang. I can't hear no tang. <laughs> Chalices and Shit, candelabras. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Is we it did. good? A, I had a suit of armor brought in. Is it good? What's going on? <laughs> You're talking about... Uh, what the, the fuck's going on? All this? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're back. Hello? Got it. We're good. No. But as I say, aren't okay. you part of that anger? Aren't you encouraging that anger? For example, my you uh, USB cable for my microphone is very flimsy, and like my laptop, it's really shitty. So if I move at all, it will disconnect and reconnect, and I got to do a whole setup thing. You described Mr. Obama's State of the Union address. You described Mr. Obama. Why did you describe Obama? Obama like that, sir, Mr. Shapiro. Why did you describe Obama? As a foreigner? <laughs> in 2012, as fascist mentality in action. He described Obama as a fascist? Bro, look inwards. Candace Owens, his best friend, hung out with Kanye, who is now an open Nazi, a black Nazi. Literally, the Nazis will fuck you up if you were black, by the way. They would kill you. They hated black people and Jewish people and all types of people. They killed communists. They killed socialists. They killed gay people. They killed trans people. They killed black people or enslaved you or made you fight for them or, or build their, their bunkers and shit. They, they hated minorities. And they hated people that were of other religions and ideologies. So how is Obama a Nazi, bro? Come on, dude. Well, I think that if you, are, if you want to argue with the characterization, then we can talk about what exactly his State of the Union address said. Is it charged language in politics? Sure. The problem that I have is not with charged language in politics, which I'm generally in favor of. I like a robust public debate and a very loud and, and, and spirited. He does not like a robust, loud debate. He does not like a robust, loud debate. He is a pussy. He runs away from everything. He is a liar. Sorry, I said that word. I will not use the P word anymore. He is a baby. He is a butthead. He is a poo-poo uh, doo-doo head. Public debate. I have no problem had, with that uh, diapy, what I'm talking diapy, about is the assumption white. that people with whom we disagree politically are inherently of bad character or, or, in your words, want to bring us back to the dark ages. But again, it was your description of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. Yeah. He said Obama's State of the Union address, was, which is when the, the president gets elected and then they, they do a speech, he said it was fascist. Really? Really now? That's... The wording of, of President Trump's 2012 address was bad and wrong that's all there's plenty of things are bad and wrong but it doesn't make them fascist yeah bro plenty of things are bad it doesn't mean they're a fascist like you're bad bro uh ben shabibo you're a bad guy but i'm, I'm not gonna call you a fascist you're very close you're right there you're uh, you're really you're friends with a bunch of people that are fascist and stuff but i'm not gonna call you a fascist okay he's not a fascist he's not he's a jew you know, who's just going the wrong way, making the wrong friends, and just trying to make some money. Oh, not the whole, like, Jewish stereotype, literally. I don't mean that. But, like, you know, we're all trying to make money. I'm trying to make money. You know what I mean? I want to make money. But, like, he's he, he's friends with oil billionaires. He's a conservative. He doesn't want his tax cut, like, tax cuts. You know, he doesn't want to fund welfare programs, social programs. He's just a capitalist. It's not that he's, a, you know what I mean? It's none of that. Like, you, he's just a capitalist. He doesn't care about all that. And so he'll become friends with the right. It doesn't matter because the right love capitalism. All right? Fascism doesn't go against capitalism. They actually go along quite well. They well, do. I suppose that's true. But if you would like to, again, if you'd like to read me the column out loud, I suppose I can critique it for you. Oh, well, again, with Mr. Obama, you said Jew. And you're, you're Jewish yourself. I only mentioned that because put this in context. Yeah. Ben is a Jew. Who hangs out with Nazis and far right people and people that hate Jews? So he's he might be like a self hating Jew. I don't know, but you the know. Jews who vote for Obama are by and large Jews in name only. Jinos, you. Wow, he said Jews that vote for Obama are only are Jews in name only. That's like calling someone a rhino, a uh, um a Republican in in name only. That means you're like a, a liar. You're faking it. So he's calling people fake Jews for voting for Obama, bro. Who called them? My statement was based on the fact that Jews in the United States, as an ethnic group, are largely irreligious, which is true by every single poll. Jews are the most irreligious group in the United States. Bro, he's a little, that's what I'm saying. He's a little anti-Semitic himself. Orthodox Jew who actually takes Judaism seriously. The point that I'm making is that most Jews who are ethnically Jewish are not religiously Jewish no. in any context. No, no, no. The point you were making is that Jews who vote for Obama 
are Jews in name only. Jews who vote for Obama. Obama. Obama? I said, I said that, yes, that is correct. The Jews who voted for Barack Obama, a progenitor of the Iran deal, a person who was... A progenitor of the Iran deal. If you guys don't know, the Iran deal is the deal that Obama made with Iran, which is good. He made an, a deal with Iran, a nuclear deal that said, hey, you guys don't make, make nuclear bombs or research nuclear bombs, and we'll let you use nuclear energy. That's a good deal. That's a fair deal. That's something that we should do with North Korea so that they don't get the nuke. But they have the nuke already, so we're not going to take it away. But Ben Shapiro doesn't like the deal because Obama signed it, probably. If Trump would have signed that deal, Ben Shapiro would have been right there. He would have been like, Trump, yes. Yes, Trump. Yes. You did it. Cracking down on religious liberty, a person who spent much of his career as president of the United States attempting to deprive Israel of the necessities to defend itself. That, that Bro, what do you mean? We've been funding Israel since the, 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 the start of Israel. We've been giving Israel money and shit since the start of Israel, which is good. But we shouldn't let Israel attack the Palestinians and, and slaughter them and, and mass murder them, massacre them. People, Jews who voted for President Obama, by and large, you know? cared about Judaism far less than they did about other priorities. Did you say they should Correct. turn their badge in as a Jew? Uh, yes, I believe that if you are a, I believe that if you are somebody who takes Judaism seriously, that wow, Ben Shapiro took their Jew card. Ben Shapiro took all the leftist Jews' Jew card and Obama's Jew card. He can no longer associate with Jews any anymore. Ben Shapiro, the Pope of the Jews, right here, the Pope of the Jews, took their Jew card away. Comes along with ideological ideological commitment. I mean, I guess it's also, I'm just, I mean, I, I, mean I, I hope you're having fun, by the way, going through every old tweet that I've ever sent to yeah. try and do gotcha questions, but if I am having fun. I'm having a lot of fun, especially with all the old tweets that they're digging up. That's great. This is the stuff people need to know because there's so much information on these little dweebs out there and that people just don't know and 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 people just coast off of his fame and, and they just use the right wing, oh, intellectual dark web, intellectual, uh, nerdy kids intellectual. Like, he's just a dork. He's a dork that takes money and then says dork things for the money, you know? If you'd like to have a discussion about my general philosophy or things I've done and say, I don't know, that's 2012, so it's now 2019. His general philosophy is money, less tax breaks for the billionaires and the rich, more tax cuts for the billionaires and the rich, deregulation for the billionaires and the rich, more taxes for the poor. That's literally what he wants. That's all the Republicans do. Literally. If you'd like to discuss something I've done and say like- And wars years, and shit. How about well, that? Because your book is uh, a criticism of uh, how angry America is and how America has to do better. And I'm I have an entire list on my website, sir. Sir, on my list, I have an entire website. Sir, I have a, uh, sir, I have a, a curated list of things. Sir, I have a specific list of things you can read out that will make me look better. Sir, sir, why, 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 why are you picking out these things, sir? Sir, sir. Dumb, sir I'm simply trying to I've point said. out some of the things you, you've said that seem to me to help to stoke that anger. For example, you said sure. Israelis like to build. Arabs like to bomb crap. Uh, he said that, dude. He said Israelis like to build and Arabs just like to bomb shit. That's all they're doing. Arabs just running around like ah, nah, 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 suicide vest on, just fucking blowing shit up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the Middle East is just like little bombs going off everywhere. Bro, what the fuck, dude? And live in open sewage. Oh well, my God, and live in open sewage. This is how racist this dweeb is, man. And how... But YouTube's okay with Daily Wire being up and all this stuff. YouTube's all right with that. That's okay. Because that makes them money. Right? Yeah. As I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant, bad, dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that, was that includes, dumb? Well, yes. Yes, that's a dumb tweet. And not only a bad ah, he admitted it. to mention that the next few tweets clarify that that tweet is specifically referring to the Hamas leadership. That's like the 10th like the, the, the win for Andrew Neil, yo. Like, literally, that's like the 10th fucking own he has. Which, by the way, a BBC I've, I've seen is relatively reticent to condemn. No, actually, it wasn't what you went on to do and say, uh, you are correct about the slur and our Arabs. It's not all Arabs that want to live in open sewage and blow things up. You know what's funny? What did Trump say? What did Trump say about Mexicans, huh? What was that little thing he said a long time ago about Mexicans? Like, he was like, Mexicans, like, they're rapists or something? But not all of them, right? He said not all people. Not all Mexicans. I suppose some are good people. <clears throat> That's what he said. That's what Trump said. And now you got Ben Shapiro here saying, Arabs like to bomb shit. 
Not all, I suppose not all of them, though. There's a few ones around. Here and there, you know, sprinkled about the map. Not, it's just Palestinians, even on to say. No, they know. It's and, a, no. And wow, just, just Palestinians like to blow shit up and, and bomb and, and live in sewage. Open sewage. Just Palestinians. I wonder why they're living in open sewage, Ben Shapiro. Could it be because they're being bombed to hell and, like, they have no infrastructure left and they're living in, like, a corner of the map and all their land's being slowly taken away? Is that why? No, that couldn't be why. That, that could not be why, guys. Well, I, don't know. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on here. The Palestinian population is rotten to the core, you went on to say. Not Hamas. Yeah, he said the Palestinian population is rotten to the core. Not Hamas, the, the bad guy leader that they're all afraid of, that they use to shit on Palestinians. Not Hamas. He could have said Hamas is a bad guy and whatever, but he said no. Palestinians have souls that are corrupt and bad or whatever. Palestinians. Nice. Oh, the people. The Palestinian oh, I, Arab population. I say that by poll numbers, they elected Hamas. They elected. By poll numbers, they elected Hamas. By poll numbers. By poll numbers, they elected Hamas. Did you know? That Israel supported Hamas for a bit before he was the crazy, like, they supported him for the election. They pushed him as a candidate, Hamas. They supported him for a bit, and then he turned around and he was bad to, towards them or whatever. And then they were like, oh, now he's not, now he's no longer the good guy we want. No, 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 no. So they supported the bad guy they're shitting on right now, which is, uh, you know, he is shitty. He's a bad dude. But can they admit it? No, they can't. They, Hamas. they, can't. they educate their children in school that Israel should be obliterated, sir. I guess if you want to read, you know, honestly, uh, th this is a giant waste of time in the sense that the entire interview honestly, is designed for you to shout. Honestly, you're wasting my time. Sir, you're wasting my time. Andrew Neil, Andrew Neil, you're a real conservative, man. Are you a real conservative? How are you a real conservative? Things or old things that I've said at me. I don't see how I this works. You. you talk about you talk about undermining the public discourse. It seems to me that simply going through and finding lone things that sound bad out of context and then hitting. Simply going through my history and finding all the bad stuff I said. Simply going through my history and doing all that. That's bad. You, uh, that, you are you are slandering me. I will sue you. Going through my history and picking out all the bad shit I said because all the shit I say is bad. That is slander. Them with and then hitting people with them is a way for you to make a quick buck slander. On the, BBC off the fact that I'm popular and no one has ever heard of you. Uh, there are not many bucks to be made on the BBC. I'm like American broadcasting, Mr. Shapiro. Uh, I get, the point You're I'm trying to it, make seems. is that your words are hard. Yo, he's getting triggered to produce the consensus and understanding that the book seems to want to produce. Uh, that's my point that you write about, you know, Judeo He's triggered, Christian culture dude. Look so at on. him. But so much of what you look said in the past would seem to Judeo Christian culture and want to produce. Look, look, look how he uh, moves. That's my point that you write about. Look at his head move. Judeo Christian. Look at his head move around him. Look at his lips and shit. Uh, like that's he, my he point can't take it. You write about, you know, Judeo Christian look culture that. and so on. He's so, so uncomfortable, dude. So much of what dude. you said in the past would He's seem triggered. to turn its back on Judeo Christian culture. You're lecturing me on Judeo-Christian culture after you call the pro-life position barbaric? I, I just really? asked you a question. You're lecturing me on on pro-Christian uh, values when when you, you said abortion and the way we treat women is trash? Huh? Have you read the Bible? Ben Shapiro hasn't because the Bible literally says you can have abortion. Let me look it up. Let me look at the part of the Bible where it says you can have abortion because it's, it's a beautiful part of the Bible. I love reading it. <clears throat> I'm going to read it to my kids as a bedtime story, bro. Bro, look, listen to this. Bible abortion. Look at this, dude. Look at this. This is funny. All right. Wikipedia, the source of all truth. The ordeal of the bitter water was a trial by the ordeal administered to the wife whose husband suspected her of adultery, cheating, but who had no witness to make formal case. So basically, in the Bible it says that a priest gave a guy's wife a drink, a bitter water, a, po a, a potion. And if she cheated, she, drank she drinks the potion, and if she cheated, she would have a, mis a miscarriage. Uh, you know... So, in the Bible itself, they do abortions. Da, da, da. What? Abortions.
and I asked you a question, you failed to answer a single one of them. <laughs> Frankly, I find this whole thing a waste of time. If you no want to read the book, way, critique dude. the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, no you can way, do whatever bro. you want. That can't be. I don't care. That can't be, be bro. I can't just don't believe me. You and I've never heard of you until I briefed myself of this. But that's damn. I never heard of you till I read all the fucked up shit you said. Oh my God! Andrew Neil's destroying Ben Shabibo. It's not the issue. You have a new book. Why the hell are you interviewing me? It's an interesting book. Why are you interviewing me? Why are you interviewing me? If all you got stuff is, is bad, huh? Look, but my point is, your book claims <laughs> well, it's society. Well, it'd be society. nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is well. I, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again. If you would let me just finish the question. Damn, bro. He's like, he's like, well, why don't you judge the book at any other time? Well, I will. Andrew Neil's like, I will, man. I will judge a book right now. Let me just wait. Hold up, bro. And then, frankly, I don't think society you know honestly, is turning honestly, back sir, on this, this is where he's about to quit. This, look, look at this. Look at this. Well, it'd be society. nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is well. I, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again. If you would let me just finish the question, your book frankly, claims that society. You know <laughs> honestly, is turning honestly, back. sir. On Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is, what are those values? What, what, what are the values it's turning its back on? I, I you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interview. I'm not inclined to talk to you, man. I don't like you. You hurt my feelings. You really made me look bad, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not your books, Andrew Neil. To you, man. Viewer, so I, think <coughs> I appreciate your time. All so right, thank right. You well, so well, thank oh you for your God. time and uh, for showing that anger is not part. Of the Ben Shapiro voice is hurting my throat. Of American political discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro, we'll say goodbye.